Hi, I'm Mary Kelly Linton. This is the 2022 budget presentation. There's six components to our agenda today. Um, strategic planning and introduction, our budget introduction, then we'll get into the 2021 operating budget, uh, look at council direction for 2022, talk about our 2022 capital projects, and that's in a draft form right now, and then look at the 2022 budget um, firstly, though, we have to talk about strategic planning because our budgets are driven by our strategic priorities. Uh, when it comes to our strategic plan, uh, back in 2019, uh, Centre Wellington Council passed a strategic plan unanimously, and it has six goals. F good financial management, strong local economy, safe and well-maintained roads and infrastructure, good government, healthy growth, and active and caring community. Let's get into each one. Number one, good financial management. Uh, one of the things that was important to this council that we continue to support the principle that residential growth will pay the increased cost of providing services and infrastructure to, to, to new residents. We wanted to make sure we maximize sources of non-tax revenue, and we wanted to make sure we did a, a timely review of our financial management practices. When it comes to strong local economy, I don't think there's too many things that are more important than this. Uh, we want to facilitate new businesses coming to Centre Wellington. Uh, we want to facilitate new retail uses to meet our growing needs. Uh, and we want to do whatever we could to promote tourism. Safe and well-maintained roads and infrastructure. We want to ma manage the flow of traffic in and through Centre Wellington, increase the availability of downtown parking, enhance alternatives to private vehicle use, protect our long-term water supply. We didn't want residents to ever worry about the quality and quantity of our drinking water. We want to reinvest in our rural road system and continue to replace and repair our bridges. Good government. We want to review our government structure. Uh, we want to enhance communication and teamwork on council and between council and staff. We want to enhance communication and engagement with the public healthy growth. We want to ensure that housing mix provided adequate attainable housing. It was important to us that anybody who wanted to live in Centre Wellington could afford to live in Centre Wellington. We want to manage the pace and scale of new development and retain our small town. Active and caring community. We're looking into expanding indoor recreation facilities with some of our partners to meet the needs of our growing population. We want to continue to support caring organizations and service clubs in the community. We want to care for our natural environment, and we want to support the heritage in our community neighborhoods. So let's get into the budget itself. First, let's focus on some center lines and facts. It might come as a surprise to some that the township only takes 29% of your property taxes. The county takes 57% and education takes 14%. When it comes to the average commercial industrial tax breakdown, the county takes 41%, education takes 38%, and the township is left with 21%. Many of these funding challenges are the same year over year. COVID has been a little bit of an exception. Um, this past year, it's been a challenge, and this upcoming year, it'll be a challenge as well. Hopefully not as much of a challenge, though. Centre Wellington, like many other municipalities across Ontario, has been dependent in the past on the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund, or OMPF for short. As you can see by this graph, in 2009, Centre Wellington received over $1.5 million in OMPF funding. And then you fast forward to 2021, you see a gradual decrease. In 2021, we only received just a little over $200,000. So this, that's putting some challenges on our... COVID-19 has impacted our budget. The township continues to experience cost increases and revenue reductions as a result of the pandemic in 2021. There have been significant impacts in our recreation programming revenue as well as our investment revenue. A portion of these impacts have been offset, though, by cost savings across the township. A COVID-19 reserve fund has been set up to assist with these impacts. The combination of provincial funding and township funding has gone into these reserve funds. 2022 is expected to have less COVID-19 related impact in comparison to the last couple of years, and that's good news. When it comes to development charges, they're a very important source of funding for capital costs and debt repayments. 
um, that are primarily due to growth in Centre Wellington. And we've taken a very strategic direction that growth should pay for growth. And that takes off some pressure uh, from property taxation as well as water wastewater rates. There's, uh, there's six different DC categories, roads slash public works, fire, parks and recreation, administration, water, and wastewater. Let's take a look at our inflation analysis when it comes to our operating budget. If you can see from 2020 to 2021, there's been a significant increase in inflation from about less than 1% to almost 4%. When it comes to inflation analysis for capital projects, you'll see a, a significant uh, increase as well on this side. In 2020, we were looking at a 2.5% increase. In 2021, we're looking at a 7.5% increase. So this is providing some uh, challenges as our, as our capital projects are coming in higher than anticipated when it comes to costs. So the bottom line for us is that the council provided direction to staff to come in at a 2.4% increase in taxation or less. And the problem is that our inflation is significantly higher. So the difference between inflation and council's direction is 2.6%. That makes, making, makes setting the budget difficult for us. Let's get into our operating budget in 2021. This graph here um, demonstrates the net spending per department. As you can see, uh, infrastructure services uh, is sitting at 31% of expenditures, community services, the other big one here is sitting at 36% of tax supported operating budget. So that includes things like salaries and includes other, other uh, ongoing operating costs. Corporate services is, is sitting about 13%, uh, followed by other services at 11%, the administration, which includes uh, clerks and, and council and that kind of thing, that's at 6%, and then planning and development is at, is at 3%. When it comes to our gross revenue by function, you see that the majority of our revenue comes in the form of taxation at 56%. Um, other revenue is at 17%. Fees and charges that we receive are, is at 12%. Transfers from our reserves and our reserves funds at 11%. And then penalty, interest, and investment sitting at about 3%. Looking at our gross expenditures per function, um, our salaries and benefits are sitting at 44% this year. That's very consistent over the last the number of years, the last decade. We're sitting anywhere between 43 and 48%, so that's uh, been consistent year over year. Our purchase goods and services are sitting at 22%. Our contribution to reserve reserve funds is at 30%. Our long-term debt charge is only at 3%, and that's really good for a muni municipality our size, a uh, municipality that is doing a lot of work. So that's a very low debt rate. So now we're gonna focus on some of our service areas. Let's start with roads maintenance. So roads maintenance is completed by our infrastructure services department and includes looking after all our urban and our rural roads, uh, paving, gravel resurfacing, uh, curb gutters, uh, crack, ceiling, pothole fill, uh, filling, road patrol, uh, grading, dust laying, bridges, culverts, maintaining our bridges and culverts, our road signage, uh, traffic signals, crosswalks, uh, our boulevard garden policy, everything related to our roads is included in this, in this functional area. And then let's look at the winter snow plow. Um, we're committed to quality snow removal services. We have regulations that are, that are established by the province. So we have to make sure that we plow and we provide sand and salt and, and provide the staff to do all that stuff um, and make sure that it's of a certain uh, level of quality. Uh, 11 routes in the township takes approximately five hours to complete, uh, depending of course on the amount of snow. Hopefully this year it'll be a, a small amount of snow and it can take a little less time. Um, snow plowing uh, takes place over 920 lane kilometers, 24 seven coverage from December to April. And staff uh, complete snow removal in the cores of both downtown Fergus and Alora. A lot of that has to be done by hand. Let's look at winter sidewalk maintenance. So our, our township maintains 114 kilometers of sidewalks. 
and during the winter months um, our staff complete snow removal over all those sidewalks so typically two sidewalk machines are, are working to clear Allura sidewalks and then two sidewalk machines are looking to clear um, snow in Fergus and in uh, Allura it takes about one day in Fergus it takes about 1.5 to two days and that's why sometimes we can't get to your sidewalk as soon as you'd like us to is because we have 114 kilometers of sidewalk to clean let's look at roadside mowing and grass uh, the township maintains about 700 kilometers of roadside mowing every year uh, 231 acres of grass so we're looking we're, we're looking after our cemeteries our cul-de-sacs our storm ponds and other township property let's move into the community services department center Wellington fire and rescue as everybody knows it's an essential service it, it's required by our, the Ontario government to have this service and includes public education fire prevention fire protection and fire investigation we currently have 66 volunteer firefighters, amazing people. Uh, two stations, one in Fergus, one in Laura, and our firefighters respond to fires, medical situations, vehicle accidents, and technical rescues. Uh, we've completed over 64 fire code inspections and issued approximately 2,600 burn permits in 2020. Center Wyanton Fire has responded to just under 450 emergency calls in 2020. Let's take a look at tourism and culture. Um, it's done out of our community services department. It's so important to both Fergus and Allura and the rest of our township. Uh, we do a lot of our work in partnership with Regional Tourism Organization 04, RTO4 for short. We work closely with the Allura and Fergus BIAs and other leaders in tourism to support an increased tourism profile of, of Allura and Fergus as significant tourism destinations. COVID-19 has been a bit of a challenge on that front, but we're doing some really good work regardless. Uh, the Allura Visitor Centre is open seven days a week, 52 weeks a year numerous marketing initiative to support tourism and growth in center wellington a lot of that is social media related these days tourism and culture supports and hosts over 100 events annually we support culture days the Ferg scottish festival highland games river fast horse and hound and many 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 more recently we've done a cultural map and that's identified 1271 cultural assets in center wellington some of our activities over the past year and a bit have been reduced due to COVID, which is unfortunate. Hopefully they can be back in 2022. Let's look at indoor recreational facilities. Um, our Center Wellington Community Sportsplex is a jewel in our community, a multi-use facility. We got a twin pad surfaces. We have a pool, large hall, fitness facility, lots of meeting rooms. And as well, we have some really great outdoor event space that is being used by the first Fergus Scotch Festival, the, uh, the Fall Fair and other groups. Uh, Laura Community Center and Arena, ice pad meeting room and medium sized banquet hall. And that's gonna be getting a real nice upgrade in the next year and a bit. Bellwood uh, Community Hall and Ball Diamond, uh, small banquet hall and kitchen. And we're gonna make sure we do some good work to improve that facility as well. Um, so we provide 90,000 aquatic users per year, range from sh uh, children to seniors. And the facilities employ 45 part-time staff, um, mainly youth from our own community. And again, in 2021, some of our activities have been reduced due to COVID-19. Looking at our active and our passive parks, uh, we maintain multiple sports field, 60 park locations, and 198 acres of public open space. Baseball diamonds, hardball diamond, seven full-size soccer rugby fields, mini soccer fields, splash pads, play structures. We're getting more and more play structures every year. Two skate parks, including the new one in, in Alora, five multi-use courts and two outdoor multi-use pads. So many of the organizations pay some user fees, so not all of these facilities are completely dependent on the taxpayer.
Let's talk about economic development. We've been making some really, really good headway when it comes to increasing the number of jobs and the level of investment in Centre Wellington. And this hasn't come by accident. Um, we've been encouraging business retention and expansion. We've been facilitating external business attraction, lots of marketing out to different communities to try to bring their businesses here and increase jobs in Centre Wellington. Uh, we've been facilitating commercial and industrial development projects and investment. Uh, we're managing, we've, we've purchased employment lands, 55 acres outside of Fergus uh, for, a new in, uh, for a new business park. Um, we're managing financial incentives and we're promoting our innovative and our thriving economy on a daily basis. So let's focus next on council direction that was provided for our 2022 budget. So in our pre-budget meetings that were held in June, September and October, Council provided our staff with some direction to date. Five areas. First is maintain a tax rate increase equal to or less than 2.4%. Assume assessment growth equal to 2%. Increase fees and charges for 2022 by 2.4%. Include approximately $1.7 million in growth related capital projects to be funded by development charges within each year of the 10 year capital forecast and five capital funding, 4.5 million in general capital, gas tax and OLG funding, 79,000 to increase equipment and vehicle replacement reserves, and allocations to WSIB, insurance contingency and legal reserves to match target funding levels. So this was direction provided by council to our A few more areas of direction, um, the OLG funding allocation policy won't change in 2022. It will re be reviewed again in 2023. Our arts, culture, heritage OLG funding will be distributed by council through a grants application process. That'll be new this year. Direction on specific capital projects in years 2022 to 2031 of the capital budget and the long-term cap uh, capital forecast. There's been direction provided on the draft bridge and major culverts 10 year plan for the years 2022 to 2031. We've approved the staffing strategy for 2022 and we've approved the budget timeline. So let's look at our capital projects first. So let's look at our 2022 capital projects. Firstly, rural roads. Four roads there, third line, side road five to Wellington Road 17 will be repaved. Eighth line east from Wellington Road 21 to SR10, rural roads upgrades, maintenance gravel will continue, gravel road drainage improvements will continue. Our big project for the urban roads is St. George Street East from Herrick Street to Garshore Street, major reconstruction. Moyer Street from Gettys to Princess is going to be reconstructed, reconstructed. And then Metcalf Street pedestrian signals will be put in. This is gonna really help uh, with some of the congestion up on Metcalf Street. Looking at uh, bridges and major culverts, first line bridge, uh, a significant project to rebuild that bridge, uh, 24 WG, and then fifth line bridge, 16 WG. So as far as our bridges go, we still are on track to rebuild or build 21 bridges in eight years. So compare that to five bridges built in the previous eight years. That's significant accomplishment. Looking at parks and recreation, uh, we're going to be doing a significant re a rebuild and renovation of the Allure Community Center. Uh, Milligan Park implementation, neighborhood interconnections will continue this year, barrier free, accessibility upgrades, and then urban forestry uh, will continue with significant investments year over year on our green environment. Moving over to water and wastewater, um, significant infrastructure projects uh, on Union Street uh, West renovation, uh, Fergus wastewater plant dewatering, um, Clyde Street pumping station, we're gonna fix the odor uh, issue that we had there. Oh, exciting project, the well F2 additional capacity and then various other well rehabilitations. This came out of our a water supply master plan. So that's pretty exciting that we're gonna be doing those projects. And then again, again, a water and wastewater servicing master plan. Other projects that we have that are important to this community, a termite, manage, a termite management program, and then um, a major secondary plan for South Fergus is underway. Parking enforcement uh, was important and it will continue in 2022 in our downtown areas. And then the asset management implementation. Let's focus on budget input. 
Connect CW is a really good tool. It gives us an opportunity to provide an open government approach um, about being transparent about our funding decisions. Budget information on Connect CW is an opportunity for us to show you how your tax dollars are being spent and then for you to see the impact of your budget decisions based on your priorities. So please provide input on the 2022 budget. Visit www.connectcw.ca or centerwellington.ca backslash budget to have your say. The budget survey will remain open until October the 29th, 2021. You'll also be able to see the budget documents that we have by going to centerwellington.ca backslash budget. You see the 2020 budget, the 2021 budget, and then our draft 2022 budget. And then in addition to that, um, there are budget deliver deliberations scheduled for November 30th, December 2nd, and December 7th if needed. Um, so you can register as a delegation and take part in those meetings. They will be over Zoom, they will be virtual meetings, but you can take part in those. And then we're shooting for a budget approval of December the 20th. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this presentation and, and to listen to me speak. We really want to hear from you, so please go to connectcw.ca and give us your input. Thanks and have a great rest of the day.